When we think of our favorite Italian actresses, there's a good chance you'll choose the spectacular Sofia Loren or the crush-worthy Claudia Cardinale. Women create the appeal of Italian cinema, and they're precisely what led me to love it. Anya Mignani, star of many Italian films, sticks out to me as La Femmina Perfetta, with her wide, toothy smile and her contagious laugh. She may not be the most soft and feminine, like dreamy actress Anita Ekberg and La Dolce Vita, She's rough around the edges, and she's a novelty of her time. It's no wonder that her directors were somewhat intimidated by her fire and talent. Tonino Delicoli, a friend who worked on films with Pier Paolo Pasolini, is quoted saying that Ma è un po' difficile per lui perché non può correggere molto la magnani. We can't forget her infamous relationship with director Roberto Rossellini. She's devoutly irresistible as an actress and as a woman. But we want to explore more deeply how these two directors, Pasolini and Rossellini, portray her in their films, specifically in her role as a woman. By looking at two of her most famous films, Roma Città Perda and Mamma Roma, released 17 years apart, we will see how the role of the woman has changed and how Anna Magnani behaves in these roles as Pina and Mamma Roma. La Magnani, or La Lupa as she's called, is phenomenal in these films. To the modern day viewer, it's easy to see how La Magnani has become the actress that she's known as today. Harold Klerman, American film critic, calls her acting volcanic, but also passionate, fearless, and exciting. In these two films, the description is flawless. The plot of Roma Città Perta goes something like this. In 1943, Nazis occupy the city of Rome. Pina, mother of one, is getting married to her husband tomorrow. But he is part of the group that opposes Nazism. Many people in her life, including her priest, are also part of the resistance and are eager to hide their true identities from German troops to be safe from suspicion. When Pina's entire apartment building is vacated for investigative purposes, her fiancé is caught trying to escape and she is shot by Germans in the street while running after him, and her son watches. Later on, we watch as the resistance members become martyrs, as they refuse to give information on other members of the resistance, and we watch their tragic deaths as the movie it comes to an end. Now as we investigate Roma Città Perta, we are blown away about how iconic and heart-stopping her character Pina has become. When judging the two directors on their ability to create long-lasting and unforgettable characters, Rossellini easily won this challenge. Pina's death is one of the most noteworthy and memorable scenes in all of cinema. It is a quick but shocking scene, one in which Pasolini's Mamma lacks. <laughs> Mamma is also a story about a mother, but she is single and proud of it. She feels above her history of prostitution and decides to take her teenage son, who she abandoned when he was just a child, out of the Italian countryside into the periferia or the outskirts of Rome. When she gets mixed up into thievery and romance, she gets increasingly angry, full of disappointment, and an ultimate sense of guilt when her son dies in prison. Although Mamma Roma is nowhere as iconic as Roma Città Perta, it is amazingly directed. Even more charming is the character of Mamma Roma, She's shocking and sensual, but sweet and funny as well, which renders a memorable character, as well as a dysfunctional bond between ex-prostitute and her son Ettore. Pasolini's creation of Mamma Roma does not conform to the casalinga trope in many Italian films, but it's much sexier, making the viewer uncomfortable during many scenes with her invasive questions and references to her career as a prostitute. Mamma Roma even initiates sex between her prostitute friend and her son to show him what it feels like to be with a real woman. In any case, Mamma Roma is far from most mothers shown in films during the 50s and 60s. In terms of deciding a winner who portrays women in a more positive light, the solution is harder than it seems. To me, there are pros and cons of how each director chose to portray their female characters. Mamma Roma may diverge from the typical woman in media, though this divergence comes with a cost, as she proves to be only talented because of her body and sexual deeds. Pina is a housewife, so she stays close to the typical woman trope. There is no clear answer to which director has created the better woman portrayal. But after thinking long and hard about the answer, I choose Pier Paolo Pasolini, the director who chose Anna Magnani to play the exciting Mamma Roma, a character which pushes the bounds of who and what makes a woman. This character will come to be known as one of the most provocative women in Italian cinema, but also one of the most powerful. Of course, Neither one of these films would be anything without their star, 
the volcanic earth mother of all cinema, and acting genius, Anna Magnani. It's clear that Rossellini and Pasolini chose Magnani for their films intentionally. She worked with Italy's best directors from 1941 all through the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. She died in her native Rome in 1973, a year after the release of her last film, Fellini's Roma. This project is dedicated to La Magnani, an inspiration to us all, especially to those who strive to be strong, outspoken women. Siamo grati per la tua dedicazione e il tuo talento per sempre.